Hey guys, uh, Tim at CRE in sunny San Diego here again, talking to you some more about uh, 944s and trying to help you learn all you can about them. I, I think it uh, goes a long way towards uh, helping you enjoy the car more, uh, just if you know more about the system. So right now I want to talk a little bit about uh, the OPRV, the oil pressure relief valve. Uh, if you call it OPRV to your friends, it sounds like you're cool and you know all about 944s. So OPRV is oil pressure relief valve. This is the, uh, the site on the block that we're talking about. NAs on this one, this is an oil cooler housing mount right here, and here's a sleeve. This sleeve was used on the early blocks up through 86, model year 86, including the turbos, and that's accommodating a early three-piece uh, OPRV, which consists of a cap, a spring, and another cap. Uh, one of them we'll call a piston, okay, just to differentiate. But uh, after 1987 model year, they went away with this sleeve and a bigger diameter OPRV and actually went to a one piece. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, let's go over here to these to the table here. I'll show you some various uh, types of OPRVs. This is a really early style right here. I'm gonna put my eyeballs on, Oops, right here. And uh, you can find different uh, versions of this, even though they're both three piece early, uh, piston, spring, cap. This one's got a socket head on it. Be careful, careful not to strip that thing out. That's also got an aluminum crush washer underneath it. Here's another style that's got a 17 head on it. Look at the differences in the piston, in the piston, the cup here, and even in the length of the springs. Yeah, so don't mess these guys up. So if you if you pull out multiples, keep them separately. That's why I have these bags separately like this. So this is an early three piece. When you're installing this, the, uh, the, the alignment is a little less critical, is a little bit more forgiving than installing a one-piece later generation uh, OPRV because you've got to line this thing up so that this, uh, the piston is inside the block in that sleeve. Here's the spring in between, and here's the cup on the outside. This is in the block. This guy is in your oil cooler housing, which is right here, and that is the thing upright that's this orifice right here so uh, you can understand that if this sleeve is in the block this one's uh, in the middle and this guy's in the uh, in the uh, oil cooler housing you've got to get that lined up right you can't have them like this or like this the spring's going to be more forgiving because there is some movement laterally like this so uh, it's not quite as critical but still this piston has to be lined up uh, really well inside of the block so that it can move freely and do its job okay so these are early ones that were used up through uh, 1986 model year including the turbos and then uh, starting in um, 1987 they went to this design this one's separated right now it'll be in here that's the correct length of it it does have a uh, seal in there too but uh, this one's been disassembled for teaching or whatever so it's an early uh, OPRV one piece Instead of relying on the on the spring to move the piston cup like that inside the block, this one has an internal uh, uh, piston inside you know inside of it there. So, and you can tell the earlies from the later one piece by uh, easiest by this area right here. The early um, one pieces have a real skinny uh, section up here, and here's a 1987 late one. See that there's a quite a decided difference here in the thickness of this. These came out. Uh, actually before this one did. So you got your early three piece piston cup cap like that coming out. 87, they came out with this to uh, make an improvement to the systems. And then they actually went back in and designed this retrofit one to replace the early uh, types with the, uh, the, the piston spring and cap. So don't get these guys confused. There's different O-rings on the tip. Uh, different application. So this one is a is a retrofit, like I said. So it is actually meant to go in a block with a sleeve. This one is not. Um, that's all good right there. Uh, and again, I say you can tell them really easily because of this. Watch your foot pounds on installing these guys. Um, we got to crush that aluminum uh, washer underneath that it seals it. But obviously, you don't want to hurt this guy. I don't want to talk about um, oil cooler housing alignment right now, but I do want to mention that you can use these tools. One of, one of these two tools is gonna to be appropriate for your block. So you can see that uh, this one's a little bit, little bit smaller diameter. They both insert in a hole, but this one is used for uh, blocks that have a sleeve. This one is, is for the blocks that don't have a sleeve. And that will drop right in like this and 
you can see how effective that'll be at aligning, lining up your block, your spring, your oil cooler housing so that you don't get that binding we talked about, okay? There's other differences in the um, oil cooler housing, which I made another video about, uh, but we don't need to get in there right now. But today we're just talking about OPRVs. So there is a fourth generation OPRV that a lot of people don't know about, uh, but a little bit of reading uh, will show you that the only difference is um, that that version had a little bit of extra corrosion control treatment. Otherwise, it's identical to the, uh, the late model 87 on ones. There's a split too with the, the 924Ss. Even though the, the, the American 924Ss were model year 1987, they still, the early cars still got this three-piece valve and uh, later on in production for the 924s's, they went to the uh, to the one piece later. So uh, that's a little little tidbit for you. But just be careful on, on the way out. See which version you have. If you're not happy with this uh, early spring type, you can update it to the the retrofit. But these things are really expensive. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, if you can find a, a used one, cool. Um, and uh, there's that. But one of the one of the uh, advantages of using the older style and piston and cup uh, OPRVs like this is that you can do a fun neat trick of stacking little washers inside the cup or on the other side here and you can you can see that if you install that normally installing washers in here for spacers actually has the effect of increasing your spring tension so what's that gonna do for you it's gonna increase your oil pressure so you can go from five bar ultimate up to six bar seven bar uh, we've had um, experience uh, here in SoCal with uh, a car running as high as seven bar and still not blowing out the base gasket on the um, oil filter. That's, the, that's my chief concern. Uh, I'm not worried about my bearings getting a little bit more oil pressure. I love that idea. But um, if your OPRV gets stuck for some reason, it can blow the, the base gasket right out of the uh, oil filter. So that's uh, a little bit of inform information for you on the OPRVs. Uh, different styles, different iterations uh, for different eras, um, and, and uh, got to have that thing working perfectly. Um, obviously, otherwise you lose oil pressure, get the wrong amount of oil pressure, and that means game over for your rod bearings. So keep an eye on it. You should be eyeballing your oil pressure gauge as you're driving the car too once in a while. In the race cars, once a lap, at least once a lap. Pick a spot in the front straight where you're just relaxing and sweep your gauges. You're looking at coolant temperature, oil pressure, etc. So uh, uh, if you like that information, pass it on, uh, share, share the video. Uh, I need subscriptions as always. And uh, let me know what else I can uh, teach you guys about 944s. That's all I do all day, every day. So kind of steeped in the culture and, and the information. Okay, take care. Have fun with your 944.